Good morning, it is 5.34 a.m. Sunrise is in exactly 30 minutes and today I've decided to do the video that so many of you have been asking for since I launched my first GFX video a few weeks ago and that is a comparison between the GFX and the Nikon D850. Now I haven't even tested these two side by side, of course I've been shooting with the D850 for many months, almost a year now, so I can guarantee that I'm going to end up telling you they're both great cameras. So that's the spoiler alert to start with, don't give me a thumbs down if I say it, I've said it up front. Um, what I'm interested in seeing is what is the actual difference once I get them onto the computer, um, and I might even print one of each image as well, um, and I'm sure what we'll see is that the larger sensor of the Fuji will give me a better result. It's bound to happen. As much as people don't want to believe it, I think that is what is going to happen. Um, I've seen so many people in the comments of that first GFX video saying that you can get the same results out of just about anything else. I don't think that's the case. Personally, I think Fuji glass is superior to most other glasses. This is my own opinion, by the way. And the medium format sensor just has something magical about it. I can't tell you what it is. I'm going to try and work it out today. Also, I'm out hanging out with another YouTuber. You should go and check out his channel. Here he is, Andrew Dawes. Say good day, Andrew. How are you guys? <laughs> so go and check out Andrew's channel. He does all sorts of wacky stuff traveling around the world. And he has invited me down here to a place called the Salamander Tree this morning, which is this amazing tree here. And that's what we'll be shooting. Uh, as you can see, some color starting to come up on the horizon as well. Uh, I've just been taking a couple of test shots to get my composition right because, as you know, with this GFX, I'm limited to the 45mm lens. Now, that's the equivalent of 36mm in uh, full frame. So what I've got is my 24 to 70mm lens, the 2.8, which is the same as this, this is a 2.8, and I'm just going to put it on 36mm. That's how I'm going to try and do the closest comparison I can, remembering that the aspect ratio is slightly different. This is a 4 to 3 and the DSLR is a two to three. So we're gonna get a slightly different aspect ratio. So I've got the Nikon D850 out. I've put the 24 to 70 mil lens on. I will just manually sort of pick 36 mil. I'll take one shot with this. I've got this at F18, and I'll use this, this at F18 as well, just so it's a fair comparison. And then we'll just see what happens. So let's do it. And this will be, this is the shot we're gonna use. So it's now off. It's a four second exposure. Okay, and we'll really quickly swap them over so the light doesn't change too much. Here we go. Nikon D850. And we're at F18. It's four seconds. All right, so there we go. So the two images have been taken. I can already see too, when I look at the preview, each of the preview, just the difference in the color. And I know it's just the screens. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what I pull up in post-production. But I can see there's a difference already. So there's the two images. So what we're going to do is we're going to move. Now, good tip for photographers, by the way, if you are somewhere where there is really nice foreground in the sand like this, whether it's snow, sand, dirt, mud, 
do your best not to walk across it because what you'll end up doing is just upsetting people. And uh, yeah, check this out, Andrew's down here. He's going for it. And there's some nice color coming up there. So I'm gonna run and go and get my other camera. So just wait here for me. <laughs> and I'll be back in a second. All right, things have just got serious. The light is going off. And so I'll do another comparison because now I'm shooting into the color, into the light. So I'm at F16 at the moment. Um, I'm gonna want it back up to F18 or, doesn't really matter. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna go, yeah, I'm gonna go to F18. What I've found with this medium format sensor is that the uh, depth of field is much shallower and that's caught me out a couple of times. So just going to, wow, that color's awesome, isn't it, Andrew? So I'll quickly switch over now to the Nikon. The one thing I have uh, struggled with a little bit is switching between systems. <laughs> Everything is different, but at least I've been, you know, using them a lot. You know, straight away, the if I look at the histogram for both images, and I know everyone's sort of questioning, um, you know, whether the dynamic range of the Fuji actually is greater, but if I look at the histogram for both images, I've got so much more room in the Fuji file than I have in the Nikon one. And I'm talking a huge difference, a huge difference. Wow. So I'd say you're getting maybe 12 stops out of this and 14 out of this or something, but uh, it is a huge difference. All right, well, that's it for today. I have successfully done a couple of comparison shots between the D850 and the GFX. Uh, I did another one after um, that initial one where the, I was more into the light and I've just done a couple more GFX shots into the light and I can tell you for sure the dynamic range of this bad boy here is a little bit better than the day at 50. I'm going to guess two stops. Uh, let's play around once I get it in post-production and I will, um, you know, I, I will give you my thoughts then. It'll just be my opinion. So if you like it, give it the thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it the thumbs up because <laughs> at least I've made the effort. I really enjoyed putting this video together because I wanted to see the difference myself between the two files side by side. And I can say the GFX comes out on top when it comes to dynamic range, it's only very slight. And it also is better at recovering highlights, particularly in the red channel where it seems to get blown out much quicker on the D850. The other thing I noticed with the GFX is it seems to render the colors that little bit more. So you end up with a more vibrant file to play with. A little bit more color seems to be kept inside the raw file. I don't know what it is. I'm not technical, but I just really like the results. They're both great cameras, but I am falling in love with the GFX system. And if you want to know more, I've got a few more videos coming up. So make sure that you stay tuned for more GFX videos. If you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. If you like landscape photography and this kind of content, then I uh, would love for you to do that. And until next time, get out there and take some photos. See ya.